I don't want to have the only healthy family in town. I want all the families to be healthy. I don't want to have the only exciting church to be a part of in town. I want every church to thrive. And that's, that's the approach to the kingdom. So part of um, the discussion around us is we, we, I don't know, for years have talked about the seven spheres or the seven mountains mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, kind of seven realms of society. Um, if you haven't heard about that, we'll just kind of give you a little bit of a, a backdrop. Um, this was somewhat new. I, I don't exactly remember when I first started hearing about it, maybe the early 2000s or something. Does that yeah, sound right yeah, to you? And yeah, probably. I remember as I heard it, it was um, a prophetic word that came to Bill Bright and Lauren Cunningham, who yeah. were large uh, leaders of large ministries, um, Youth for Christ, Bill Cunningham. Bill Bright, Campus yeah, Crusade. Yeah, yeah. And then they were different than actually the, the terms that you hear now um, were used. And it sounds like the Lord, as the story goes, <laughs> the Lord dropped it into kind of both their hearts. They compared notes. Yes, and they're like, the Lord's been saying the same thing to me yeah, about true. that. Yep. And uh, But I was always intrigued because I'm a nerd. So I'd hear those and go, that's actually not a, a, that's not really a sphere of society. Like they would say business. And I'm like, business is a portion of a sphere of society. But you can have you can have communism that doesn't have business, you know, in a huge way in their sure. deal. So, it was always interesting to me that sometimes that they were almost targets <coughs> that those men were supposed to like put up and go, hey, begin to be uh, tar- targets is probably the wrong word. There were goals to actually begin yeah. to influence those environments. I'm your business and media, and it's a little bit the church had been so in inculcated, yeah, and had so created our own Christian culture. Like, we had our own Christian rock music. We got our own Christian movies. Uh, Don't watch them, but uh, yeah. (laughs) And so it was a little bit like, no, no. It was almost a beginning word of like, you need to be salt, light, leaven. Yeah. And these are some some places you begin to, you should begin to think about. So over time, the idea's gotten bigger. Yeah. And uh, we talk about the seven spheres. And let's talk about how language creates culture. Be the first one. So uh, this is something I've kind of been learning you know, I guess probably since I was in seminary was we have to own that the way we talk is creating an expectation. And exactly. So I think some, uh, you, you know, some simple ones like I, we were using mankind a lot. We've been using humankind just to kind of just, I know women always knew they were included in mankind, but just the the kindness or the appropriateness of using humankind, say, hey, we're talking about everybody. So that there's simple ones like that. There's other ones. Language creates culture. And you have a... Um, a book called When Heaven Invades Earth. Yes. So you got the language of invasion. Mm-hmm. And then you have a chapter um, in this book. It's a it's an anthology of invading Babylon, uh, Seven Mountain Mandate. And you and met many others contributed to it as well. Mm-hmm. And it's got this um, uh, invading Babylon. It's got this word invading. Yeah. Language creates culture. It does. What, how? Where are we at with this invasion language now? <laughs> well, part of who we are is, is we are soldiers... It's a metaphor in, in scripture. Yeah, it, yeah. it is a metaphor mm-hmm. in scripture. Mm-hmm. It's not anti-scripture. Mm-hmm. It is. It is in there. It's not the whole picture. Yeah. Yep. You know. And for me, the seven mountain mandate, whatever you want to call it, gave me language for the priesthood of the believer. It, in yeah. other words, you've got you, you don't have just pastors and you know missionaries that are ministering the gospel. Every believer has that privilege and Which responsibility. Which you taught before that, but you did, we didn't quite know what to aim, how to aim it. No, this at gave us things. Yeah, yeah. This gave us language. Invasion is not a term I use much anymore because it gives a different picture than what's intended. Yeah. When I first started this, it would be 1979 is when I first started to see this clearly, and so I would challenge people: Listen, you're you're in real estate, you're in uh, mm-hmm. marketing, you're mm-hmm. in these different roles. You know, you have a responsibility there. Go in there with confidence and love and serve people and bring bring the reality of the lordship of Jesus into those environments. And so I was I was like the general or sergeant or whatever yeah. of an army just charging everybody let's let's do that this week. Yeah. And and that was our lifestyle. I still believe it. I yeah. I, I don't I don't well, deny in the seventies, our all. language was more militant, and it, it just it just kind of was, at least in my environment. You're it right. Was. The, you're right. The end times was coming. There was a belief the rapture was coming for lots of the Christian church, and right, so it was right, like right. it was time to mobilize and be militant. Uh, yeah. Maybe not in the Jesus movement, uh, but it was later on in the seventies. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. There was there was that 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 fighting <laughs> mentality. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that language sometimes is interpreted uh, fighting people. 
Yeah. You know, and, and you know, Paul uses it. He says we don't fight against, yeah. you know, people. We fight against mm-hmm. flesh, uh, against the uh, principalities and powers. Mm-hmm. So the whole point was is you're born into a war, and, uh, and that is a part of our identity. It's not mm-hmm. the whole thing. I'm yeah. a child of God. I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm yeah. know, part of the bride of Christ. I yeah. mean, the, the metaphors are, are, are uh, challenging and yeah. wonderful all at the same time. So it's it's a term that I don't use much anymore because it communicates not what conquest. I intend. A, yeah, a conquest in some ways. Yeah, yeah. there are conquests, mm-hmm. but it's not people. It's not uh, I'm going to want to take over this corporation or something. Mm-hmm. That's that's nauseating. Our strong suit is serving. Yeah. You know, anytime we leave that, uh, we're scary. We're mm-hmm. scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, as soon as I start thinking uh, Christians should run everything, that's yeah, really not true. Yeah. Sometimes we we need some people that don't know the Lord, but they are gifted, graced by God to run a nation or a business or or a city, mayor of a city or whatever it might be. They're gifted by God. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's really clear in Scripture. You know, we've got yeah. God anointing Cyrus. We have all these different individuals that God appointed for their place of rule. And uh, so I, I, the whole notion that we have to take charge of everything is wrong. Mm-hmm. And when what I teach in that communicates that, then there's a misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. What, but what I do believe is we need to all be immersed in and involved in where we're gifted, where we're graced by God. Mm-hmm. If it's business, if it's education, you know, medicine, whatever yeah. it might be, get in there and be, be Christ-like in that environment yeah. and serve mm-hmm. people well. Our service brings the significance out of other people. Mm-hmm. When we serve well, they discover who God made them to be. Yeah. Well, my goodness, what, a, what an amazing privilege. Beautiful. And- and I would add, too, that into the service is the wisdom of the Lord manifested in wise, just solutions. And so I, Absolutely. I, I sometimes get frustrated because it feels like unbelievers are like, hey, you can't influence. Like, whoa, 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 we, we are all about influence. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, and if, if our servant language, uh, which I completely agree with, if it's too strong, then they don't expect influence. Like, no, no, we think we're carrying some smart, we think we're talking to the king of the universe. Like, we, we're hoping that we're yeah. carrying some good insights into how to move forward. And certainly want to continue to, to have influence in the environments as yeah. best we can. But dominating environments or kind of cre- instituting that's, that's a ugly. Christendom, um, you know, that's that's yeah. not what anybody's mandating or thinking about uh, with those things. But I do understand some of the concern. Like, in other words, when you ha- we have language oh, yeah, of invasion, yeah. and then yeah. certainly there have been pl- times in the history when Christians were in charge of everything. And they, it was a suppression of other voices or driving yeah. out of town or a, a uh, you know, a injustice done uh, yeah. in the name of that. So... I think there's, for me, it was a helpful pushback. Like, but mm-hmm. instead, of, you know, it's, it's never kind, right? It's always like, hey, I, I get nervous when you, it doesn't come that way. But when they're like, that sounds like you're trying to con- conquer us and take control of everything. Like, okay, I can totally get how it says that. But yeah. our language that fires us up, invasion, you know, doesn't feel great to be invaded, Yeah, you know, on the other side of it. No, that's right. That's right. And there are ways you communicate in a family you would never communicate outside of a family. And this is true of, of, of our yeah. own biological yeah. family. There yeah. are things that I would say to my children I would never say outside. Like what, Bill? Not okay. because, not because they're inappropriate, <laughs> but because the context of relationship gives it meaning. You have a lifetime of understanding to exactly. know to not be misunderstood yeah. and access to get ideas corrected. Exactly. It's 100% biblical, yeah. but I wouldn't say it the same way outside of my home because yeah. I don't mm-hmm. have the relational equity mm-hmm. out there that I have here. So I have to... I have to say it differently. Mm-hmm. And this is this is one of those. I would never teach invasion if I were meeting with a group of businessmen in our city. Yeah. Goodness gracious, that yeah. would be horrible. Yeah. Instead, I would talk to them about serving and bringing out the greatness of, of the people and their jobs and whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. you, the, you would be misunderstood uh, as yeah. far as what you were trying to like motivate them to yep, yep, in, yep. In, in that particular sense. So we, I have a longer talk with. I think Chris and I talked about this for about seven hours. So I don't know. It's longer. Like I don't want to. I don't want to have too much, you know, repeat in that yeah, whole thing. Yeah, but you yeah. might want to go listen to that podcast. I think partly uh, we chat about even the language of mountains. Like we wonder about that. Like um, Paul Manwaring again said, "Hey guys, use spheres. It's like less like there's somebody in charge of the whole thing, and you got to scramble to the top of it to control it." There's a little bit of that imagery in this yeah. imagery of mountains yeah. and, that we kind of like. Okay, let's be careful of that. Oh, Although I would say agreed, but there are people controlling ideas and agendas. There are the folks who are innovating in the ideas and, and uh, articulating ideas that catch yeah. fire, catch hold, that have implications. And so the church has to be one of the folks who's advocating uh, what we understand to be the grace of the Lord, the truth of Scripture, 
out there in the yeah. in the marketplace of ideas. So I, I'm not saying we're not saying, hey, you're not going to hear from us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. or that we're not going to have great ideas. But I think you probably are saying like we don't think the church or Christians are going to be running everything, and that that's what the Lord's interested in. No, if somebody you know if somebody in in Bethel gets promoted and they're yeah. the president of a corporation because they served well, I just don't want them to forget how they got there. They got there through serving. They got there through serving. And Keep it up. Yeah. Keep it up. You'll mm -hmm. bring out the excellence and the and the strength of of everybody who works for you in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, ruling is not a bad thing. You know, we, we, yeah. uh, the, the, no, one of my professors, Dr. Mao, had said, hey, there was, the Lord knew cars are going to be invented. Somebody's going to have to decide we're driving on the right side and Excellent. other guys are coming on the left side. Yeah. Now in England, they've done it all wrong. But the, uh, <laughs> the, the I mean, some, so the ruling and how, so yeah. you have to make these rules like how we're going to yeah. live together. I interrupted yeah. you, but go ahead. No, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, I think we stated it earlier in one of these mm -hmm. gatherings that we rule with the heart of a servant, we serve with the heart of a king. That's, mm -hmm. that's the approach, mm -hmm. is that we serve because we have access to unlimited resources of God to help people around us be healthier, stronger, happier. Uh, but we rule with the heart of a servant. I'm going to use my authority, mm -hmm. any authority I have in a job or a city or whatever it might be, I'm going to use it for the sake of other people. Yeah. It's not self-promotion. It's not identity. It's not control. Yeah. It's I'm going to use it because rule is biblical. Sure. You know, those sure. who rule well in the house of faith, yeah. the rulership. So, yeah. but it's not self-serving. It's not self-promotion. Yeah. And one of the ways that it works for me, I don't know if this will work for everybody else, but when I try to think, how am I going to make these person, people I'm leading look like geniuses? That's yeah. kind of the, yeah, yeah. you know, would be one of the ways phrase, that yeah. I can, I think through, because a lot of us in leadership think it's your job to make me look like a genius. Uh, you know, we say to our, to the folks that we're leading. Right, right. But, and it, of course that happens sometimes, but if we're able to kind of go, how do I make my, my team look like a genius? I, I think that's, it it's helps huge. me get in the mindset that I need yeah. to be in, in this whole thing. So we've talked about how do, how do you make a, a secular mayor or, you know, uh, somebody who's overtly, how do you make that, you know, how do you make Nebuchadnezzar look like a genius? You're like, well, should we? You know, <laughs> there's yeah. always that interesting question, yeah. but yeah. like, I think we should at some level, yeah, you know, because exactly. Joseph ended up with Pharaoh and, and trust that as I, as I'm doing that, the Lord's going to be influencing the environment for his good. Yeah, exactly. So one of the ways we can talk about this is like, um, when we talk about the mountain of the Lord is the chief of the mountains. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe you could just we could have some dialogue about that because when <laughs> I think when I think about that I'm not I think that's actually talking about the church in that particular passage, and yet I don't think the application is that the church is supposed to be in charge of all these other spheres. <clears throat> so it's it's almost like there are believers who should be the, in in the sphere of um, of uh, economy. There should be believers who are in that and unbelievers who are in that who are creating an amazing economy. Um, so I don't think that the church kind of comes over and goes, here's how you have a good economy. Um, it, yeah. At, at that sense that there's actually, it's the Christians, not the structure of the church, who are with other people, non-believers who are creating this healthy environment. Yeah, I, I agree. It's not church structure that runs everything. Yeah. But I do think the mount of the house of the Lord, it says the peoples will stream to it. And mm -hmm. it really is talking about in that context uh, Zion is a place of encounter with God. And so as the people mm -hmm. of God who encounter God, people are going to want what he gives you. Oh, so not he authority, that, but presence. It's, yeah, it's, it, all, all real authority comes from presence, but yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that presence aspect. And, uh, and so I do think the church is supposed to have influence in all those areas. But again, not control, mm -hmm. influence. It's salt. It's mm -hmm. I just want to enhance the flavor of the meal. Mm -hmm. If I get promoted to CEO or president or whatever, that's fine. But that's not my ambition. My ambition is to be as effective as I can to bring the reality of the king and his kingdom into this environment. Mm -hmm. And it's not through manipulation. It's not through, you know, uh, being in control of stuff. It's just simply, it becomes appealing. I mean, let's be honest. When you have a healthy family versus an unhealthy family, you tend to be drawn towards the healthy family. You see a business yeah. that succeeds versus one that's going bankrupt, you're drawn towards the one that succeeds. So we have the opportunity in Christ to become, if I can use the word successful, it is a biblical term, mm -hmm. successful in a righteous sense mm -hmm. that would attract, again, the city set on a hill. It would attract people that have need for what we're experiencing in God. And that's, uh, that's where that mountain has influence over all the other mountains. Not control, mm -hmm. but influence. Mm -hmm. Because our breakthroughs now become the breakthrough for everybody. 
Wow. Okay. That that would be key, right? So that we're, our breakthroughs uh, yeah. are not personal. I'm blessed to be a blessing. And so why wouldn't we want to see some breakthrough if we know it's actually for the good of exactly. the overall environment, not just the believers exactly. in the environment, but the overall exactly. environment? Exactly. I, I don't want to have the only business in town that succeeds. Yeah. I want, I want it to be a win-win. Hmm. I want mm -hmm. the people I, I work with, work for, I, I want everyone to win. I don't want to have the only healthy family in town. I want all the families to be healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have the only exciting church to be a part of in town. I want every church to thrive. And that's, that's the approach of the kingdom.